think that's helpful.
real wobbly. But I got it where it shouldn't come down. Oh, happy day. Amen. Happy day and fix my choice. Oh, the day I got saved. I'm happy. Are you happy Be my today? Savior and my God. You know the Lord Jesus, you're happy today. Amen. You're happy to know it. Say it, amen. 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 So good to see you kids here this morning. I'm glad the bus is running again. Are you kids glad to be here today? Yeah. I'm glad you're here today. And you big kids back there, we're glad you're here too. <laughs> Let's take our hymnals and turn to 255. Start out our Sunday school hour by singing, Praise Him, Praise Him. Jesus, our blessed name. Let's all stand and sing 255 together. Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer, sing, all earth is wonderful, love proclaim, hail Him, hail Him, highest archangels in glory, strength and honor, give to His holy name, like a shepherd, Jesus will guard His children, in His arms He carries them all day long. Excellent greatness. Praise Him, praise Him, ever in joyful song. Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. For our sins He suffered and bled and died. He our rock, our hope of eternal salvation. Hail Him, hail Him, Jesus our crucified. Sound His opportunity to give to you. It's just a way we can show we love you and praise you as we were singing in the song. And I pray that our hearts will be tuned to that effect as we give this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
right in front of her up was Haley Kroll. And she stuck that plate out and said, all of it. <laughs> that was a classic. Wow. It is so good to be here with you. Oh, we missed you guys last week. It was a joy to be with Tanya and Stephen, but I'll tell you what. There's no place like Camp Lake Baptist Church. It, it's not easy going to another church. And we found a lot of friends there. We met a lot of people. It was wonderful to be there. But I love the way you worship here at Camp Lake Baptist Church. I really do. And uh, I'm so thankful to be here. We had, uh, I'll tell you a little bit of a story later during my message about some of the things that we did. And, uh, but I just want to mention a couple things. First of all, um, it was joy. I only got to go to half of the men's retreat, but what a blessing I got. Brother, Brother Jeff Farnham spoke to us men about prayer, and uh, it was really, out of Luke, it was really a blessing. Just the fellowship, uh, uh, sitting and talking to these men, and uh, it, it was really, uh, I just feel bad. I dropped the ball because of leaving and not getting more people involved. Next year, I hope to get a good number of men to go to that retreat. And I heard you ladies had a wonderful time. I would love to hear some testimonies tonight about that. And uh, looking forward to the test testimonies tonight. I've already had a little bit of an inkling about them. So I'm excited about tonight. And so I hope we come back. We'll be studying in 2 Corinthians. And um, did you see the amount last week? Did you notice that? Isn't our God amazing? He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we could ask or think. And that that happened. Looking forward to being back with you in the Word of God Wednesday night with uh, Isaiah 38. I heard that the first night of the van ministry went well. Praise God for that. And uh, deacons, we do have a short meeting after church today. Vicki wants to meet with us, so we'll do that briefly, quickly. Um, and looking forward to that. Also on Wednesday night, Mary will be in Nehemiah 6, continuing her study. Youth group going on, Heroes of the Bible, the van ministry. Uh, we're almost clicking on all eight cylinders. We're, we're about there, aren't we? If we could just get everybody back, we, we, we're getting there. So praise God. All right, notice some things about the teens. With their come learn some more about Jesus there at the bonfire night. Uh, that's been going very well, I hear. Mm -hmm. And wonderful news about that. Um, it was exciting, too, today to hear that the van ran. Because we have uh, you precious children here that haven't been able to come for a while. And uh, we're, th we're so thankful uh, to have the van running. That's a blessing. Um, Heart and Home. That's this Friday? Heart and Home. Whoa. Ladies, make sure you read this. I'm not going to read it now. I might read it in church, but read this. A wonderful time in prayer last night. Hope uh, we can have more come out Saturday at 8 p.m. Uh, there are future dates of the Heart and Home. We need another van driver. Um, here's a note to make a, a load of October the 25th, which is just, uh, what's today's date? The 11th. That's only two weeks away. We want to do a tribute to Luann Dagan. And I know many of you might not know Luann because it's been well over a decade since she had her serious stroke that put her in uh, the hospital and ultimately in Metron. But we're going to have a special day. It's close to her birthday. And we're going to have a special day to recognize Luann. I'm going to play some of her music. I think you'll get a blessing out of that. And uh, pray that I can find it. <laughs> I know there, it's around. I can find it. I believe I can. And pray that we can do that. <clears throat> we're looking forward. Uh, Dorothy has something special that day as well that she'd like to share. So we're going to honor a uh, day for Luann Dagan. Um, then that night we have a deacon's meeting. And that's preparation for our quarterly business meeting. It's already the next quarter. Can you believe it? And here we are, October. That's on a Tuesday night, and we're doing that so it won't interfere. Uh, there's no sense interrupting the good things that are going on on Wednesday night with a business meeting. Amen? We can't, can't we just have it on a Tuesday so things can keep going on a Wednesday? And that's why we're doing it this way. And uh, so be sure to read the rest of your bulletin, and I just wanted to share those thoughts with you. Thank you. All right, thank you, Pastor. I appreciate that. All right, this is the time we acknowledge birthdays and anniversaries. If you had a birthday last week, or we say, or if you got one coming up this week and you want to get it over with. <laughs> I have a birthday. We all have a birthday once a year, don't we? All right, but did we have one last week? Anybody? Anybody? I don't see anybody moving about anniversaries. When's your birthday? My birthday is before Christmas. Okay, it's coming up soon then. All right. Birthdays are fun. I had a friend that comes to see. I had his birthday two days ago. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. A birthday party? All right, that's cool. All right. Any anniversaries sitting here? That'd be, any anniversaries? Nobody's moving for that either. All right. No anniversaries. Let's all stand, and uh, we're going to sing, uh, was it 564? Yeah. Praise him, praise him, all you little children, God is love. In our hymnal, it's actually in our hymnal. Turn here if you want. I wonder. Six to four. Praise him, praise him, love him, love him, and thank him, thank him. Praise him, praise him, all ye little children, God is love. Just for the little kids. You know, in the Bible, we're called little children. Yeah. Right? Even adults are when it comes to God's children. So we're all we're all to do these things. The last thing we are to do is to thank him. Let's sing it. Thank him, thank him, all you little children. God is love. God is love. Thank him, thank him, all you little children. God is love. God is love. All right, let's be dismissed our classes and let's make sure these kids know where they're going this morning. to read this. Do you need water? I do. Thank okay. you. I meant to read this with everyone, so uh, forgive me, Norma, but I'll read it again in the morning service. It says, thank you very much for all of your prayers, cards, text messages, and the beautiful mom from Jacobson's Floral for my knee surgery. I'm thankful to be able to say I'm healing very well and gain mobility each day. I so appreciate the loving people here at Camp Lake Baptist Church. Norma Wood, thank you for that wonderful card. I'll make sure that gets up on the board. And uh, very beautiful, beautiful card. I want to take your Bibles this morning and turn to Matthew. We, we should math, wrap up Matthew today. And uh, we will go right into Mark. We're doing the life of Christ in the Gospels. Uh, <clears throat> here I got my message ready to go. I, I got to save that for later, okay? This is some prayer requests, though, that I use. We always start with some prayer requests. And uh, thank you so much, Sorry, Donna. I I, thank you. I really need it this morning. <clears throat> I, I went down there to, to the warm climes. And this has always happened. My, I never had throat problems when I lived in Florida. I went down there and everything kind of cleared up. And of course, when I, I got out there in the Gulf and kind of snorted some of that salt water. That'll clean you up, you know. Uh, and I come back to Michigan, and I'm, <laughs> but I love Michigan. Don't think I don't. I really do love this state. Hasn't the color been popping? It's been beautiful up there at Fort Faith yesterday on the way up, and whew, man, is it beautiful around. And I love Michigan's change of seasons. If you didn't know it, Dick has been in the hospital. We need to keep praying for him, and uh, I know that um, he needs our prayers. Ed is going back in the hospital later this week. Wednesday. And that's for his final, hopefully, hopefully final treatment. So be praying for Ed. Uh, Harold Potter, just pray for him. He, he, they didn't want it on the prayer line. I'll just tell you, he did have to spend the night in the hospital. She brought him home yesterday. Uh, so keep praying for Harold. It, um, didn't, they didn't want to divulge, so I'll just say unspoken about Harold. 
Um, the Brottons, as you heard, if you heard the prayer list, the prayer line call yesterday, late. Um, and they just wanted everyone to rest assured. They, they picked this up from their son, and they haven't been to church since they got it. They didn't get it from anybody here. And, uh, you know, I know that sometimes people um, get a little too worried on this thing. But <clears throat> Morris has taken it the hardest. It's really hit him hard. But I think with the medications they've given him, uh, she thinks he's turning the corner uh, even this weekend. So pray for them both to get over that. Jonathan's over it, and so praise God for that. Um, keep praying for Jimmy. I think it's October 20th you go in, is that correct? And having some uh, information and getting some uh, look at of his eye, some nerve issue. So be praying for Jimmy about that. I thank you for praying for my mom. She's about the same, still in the nursing home, still probably not going to be able to put weight on her leg until another eight weeks. So that's not r real progress in therapy until that happens. So she's going to be there a while. Um, but pray for her demeanor and her mindset. And uh, so, uh, Marie, how's your brother John doing? He's in remission? He is. And, um, yeah, it's just a miracle. I mean, they, you know, he was stage four. And um, they, uh, they just hit him really hard with the chemo. But they, they, the PET scan showed nothing. Mm -hmm. So he's good to go now for like three more months and then have another one. Praise God. And then if that's clear, it's every six months. Okay. One. So, you know, I guess they never really say he cured. But, um, you know, we're just, he's, he feels great. He's, um, you know. We keep praying. Yeah, thank you. Very Where does John live? He lives in um, Commerce Township, which is, I guess, Wixom. Oh, okay. The lake yeah. area. Sure. You know, kind of uh, a little bit east of Brighton. All right. We keep praying for John. John Natochi. Who else might have a prayer request? Donna? Um, two of Sam's cousins, uh, her, you know, her, uh, Poland Jr. and his wife, Scott Coley. Repeat the names for me, sorry. Um, Harvey Arf. and Linda Poland. Okay, we'll pray for them. And Linda's dad has it, and he was scheduled for some kind of surgery, so her whole, her family's probably... They live in the area? Uh, Kansas City. Okay. Let's pray for for um, Sam's cousins, as she mentioned, Harvey and Linda Poling and her dad. Anyone else? Uh, and unspokens. Do you have any unspokens, by the way? All right, I do too. Uh, <clears throat> Sharon. Uh, I got a phone call Friday morning from my lawyer. <clears throat> the judge is handing down a decision, evidently, uh, Monday morning. So um, I would like prayer for that. All right. Um, basically, the prayer that I would have everybody pray for is God's will. God's will, and I, I know it, you would probably love to have this thing over yes. and out of the, uh, yes. you know, <laughs> occupying your mind. We sure will. We would definitely be praying. Anyone else? Real quick. Let's go to prayer. We're going to get into the word here in Matthew 28. Father, we thank you, Lord, that all things work together for good to them that love God. Lord, we, we think sometimes about the turmoil our country's in. We think about the, the threats that have been made, the, the hatred directed toward our president and toward Christians. And yet, Lord, uh, like Joseph said to his brothers, you meant it for evil, God. Help us to look at the bigger picture that all things work together for good to them that love God. Help us to trust you. We do pray for this election. Please preserve our freedoms, Father. I pray for Dr. Chapel and, and the, his church at Lancaster and other churches as he sent a, a letter asking for prayer because the fines are mounting. The fines are mounting up and building up. And, but they refuse to cease. And I just pray that you will give them a special blessing and uh, help them in their uh, desire to please you rather than men. And there are many churches out there that are defying this ungodly order. And I pray, Father, that it won't spread anywhere else in our nation, please. 
and cause it to cease out there as well, Lord. We know it's unconstitutional. We know it goes against the fiber of our freedoms, but Lord, uh, that doesn't stop the devil. We just pray, Father, for the situation. Lord, I, I pray for these many that are ill. I pray for Dick. I pray for Ed Maybe. I pray, Father, for um, <clears throat> Harold. I pray, Lord, for the Broughtons, Morrison, Ann, help them to come to complete recovery. I pray for Craig Nelson, Lord. You know, his foot is not healing. Help him to have complete healing, Lord. I pray for Jimmy as he uh, goes to this appointment on the 20th, and I pray that he might get good news and have hope to see what God, that you will do for him. I pray that you would do a work of healing. Lord, thank you for the infusion of money into our finances is just a proof proof over and over and over that uh, you you keep your word that we can prove you now here with you've opened the windows of heaven to us so many times we just thank you i pray father uh, I, I think it might even be a direct result of the generosity of this church to these missionaries lord and so thank you i pray father for my mom i i long to be with her and see her, but I also, uh, Lord, it's hard to see her in a condition that she's in right now. My sister, Lord, I pray for Peggy. She's having a hard time with things as they are right now. Please help her as well. Lord, I, I pray for Pastor Mark's dad down there in Florida. Carolyn, bless them, help them. I thank you for the report about Marie's brother, John. And please help him, Lord. I pray for Donna's request about Sam's cousins, Harvey and Linda, and the other family members, help them over this, over this uh, COVID. I pray, Father, for the unspoken to our, <clears throat> many of them. And Lord, I also pray for this decision Monday, that your will would be done, and that uh, you would give great peace to Sharon and all involved. Bless now the word to us, and thank you for it, in Jesus' name, amen. In Matthew 28, as we have seen uh, recently, two weeks ago, we talked about Jesus' burial. And uh, it was kind of interesting that we had the same out of uh, John, our nephew. Uh, there wasn't any room in Stephen and Tanya's class. With the, they, they, are, they have a bustling group of kids, and, and they need to rearrange things in there. So Mary and I went into Wayne <coughs> where Wayne and Rhonda minister, and we were in there, and they were talking about Joseph of Arimathea. And uh, just, he was, he was trying to get people to think, were the, was, he a, was he a saved man? Because it was, there was a passage somewhere in John that talked about uh, before fear, they didn't totally give themselves. To, but I, I said, well, and I was just foaming through my Bible, and I said, you know, Isaiah does say he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. But all of us are wicked and saved by grace, right? And then it says in one of the other Gospels about Joseph of Arimathea, he was a, um, a good man and just. That settled it for me right there. Because it says the just shall live by faith. We had a really good discussion in that class. I thought it was interesting that they were around the same subject matter that we had been the week before in relation to Joseph of Arimathea. But now we see uh, Jesus has been in that tomb. I believe, as he said in John 12, uh, or Matthew 12, for three days and three nights. And uh, I won't get into all the particulars, but when I get to it in John, I'm going to explain to you why I believe Jesus was crucified on a Wednesday. I'll save that for that time, because I really believe that. I don't believe, uh, Wednesday, they didn't call it Wednesday, okay? That's our... We've inherited that name. But I don't believe that he was crucified on a Friday and rose again um, less than 48 hours later when it says three days and three nights. As Jonah. Anyway, I'll save that for when we get to it. But anyway, we are now in the resurrection morning, 28. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week. It's interesting that the Jews mark their day different than us, don't they? I mean, if you have your phone or your clock and uh, maybe you have one of these electronic gadgets and you watch it as the seconds tick towards what for it to change the day? Midnight. 
And as that clicks toward midnight, that's when we celebrate, uh, you know, New Year's Day. They drop the ball. and It's all in the middle of the night, right? When did Jews' day begin? Does anybody know? Hmm? Six o'clock? Yes, p.m. In the evening. Isn't that weird? Their day begins at six o'clock. So for them, the Sabbath began on our Friday night. And ends on Saturday night, right at sunset. Now, but the way this is worded, it, it kind of is interesting because it says, in the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn. It almost sounds like, well, now they're, now they're taking time based on uh, the way we kind of think. But I think what you need to understand that the Sabbath is past. We know that, okay? That would have been our thinking, our reckoning of a Saturday, Sabbath. And then the first day of the week, early, 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 began to dawn as it began to dawn. I got up early this morning and I, was, uh, I got up super early and I was looking at uh, Mars. You know how bright Mars is right now? Pretty, pretty bright. And, um, you know, it's clear, a little bit breezy. That was at 3 o'clock in the morning. Went back to bed and um, got up again and it was still dark. I got in my vehicle, it was still dark, and I drove to Sparta. I had to get some gas and, and uh, more importantly, I had to get some coffee. And uh, I noticed that there was this layer of clouds over us, but there was a, a brightness to the south and brightness to the north toward the east as it was, it was starting to, toward dawn. It's getting to that where the lighting, the lightning, light, not light, lightning of the skies. And it's a beautiful time of the morning, isn't it? I love that time of the morning. But this is the first day of the week. It says, Toward the first day of the week came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. <clears throat> the specifics of the other gospels sometimes makes you think that it's a totally different account. John doesn't mention any other Marys, does he? But... That's not to say they weren't there. Jesus specifically had a statement to her. But I think that we, we cannot deny that these other women were with him. And one in particular, the other Mary, I think she was the wife of Cleopas. Cleopas, or how are you saying it, that name? And so there were several Marys there. There's a, there a whole gaggle of Marys in the Bible, okay? Uh, Mary Magdalene, and that's in view here. Mary, the mother of Jesus, this other Mary. <clears throat> so it's interesting in itself. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. Many times we see in the Old Testament the phrase, the angel of the Lord, and it is a Christophany. Do you know what I mean by that? An Old Testament appearance of Jesus, and he is called the angel of the Lord in some cases. But how do we know that it's not Jesus in this case? Because he is coming out of that grave, amen? <clears throat> so this angel of the Lord, this messenger, whoever it was, it doesn't have to be named for us to know who it is till we get to glory. You don't have to know whether it's uh, you know, Michael or whether it's Gabriel or any other, but it is the angel of the Lord. Rolled that stone from the door. I believe all he had to do was just point at it, and there it went, you know? And sat upon it. He knew these women were coming. He knew there would be people coming. In fact, doesn't it say in the other passages there was another angel? God uses Matthew to just describe this one, but it doesn't uh, take away from the fact, <clears throat> excuse me a minute, <clears throat> that there could have been other angels there, as the Bible does say. Wow, thank you for that water. So good. He rolled the stone away and sat upon it. I thought they sealed it. You know, you ever seen these seals at the gas pump? You know, where, have you ever had any money stolen out of your account because somebody put one of these scanners and you put your money in there, you put your card in there, and uh, I got a call from the bank and somebody over in Detroit had spent $250 at a, at a uh, Costco using my account. And I was talking to them and said, well, it's one of these scanners. They find these people that they're literally, nobody's looking, 
open these things, put their little scanners in there, and then they could take what you have. Uh, I got it back. It was fraud. And that was given back to me, put back into my account. But I notice now there's these seals. And uh, if you see one of those broken, don't, don't get gas. Don't put your card in there. That means that the seal is broken. Somebody's up to no good. Uh, but, you know, that seal is only, it's just a piece of tape. It's an official piece of tape that, you know, and this, what was it that they did this seal? I mean, was it the seal of Pilate? Uh, a, a Roman seal? I mean, what did they use? They, they might have put something uh, gooey up there and put the stamp on it and got it in its place and, and they kind of like glued it and they put a watch there. We saw that. So they went, verse 66, and made the sepulchre sure, sealing the stone and setting a watch. There's no mention, except in the other passage, what happened to those men? Well, they were knocked out of the way. Whether they were killed or not, I don't know. They were definitely uh, uh, no match for the power of the angel of the Lord. All they had to do was go, boop, and there's that stone rolling away. I have a picture of the garden tomb, and it's just uncanny to see that trough, that uh, stone trough. Well, you could just imagine a stone rolling in that trough in front of that door. And uh, I believe that is the place. I believe that is the garden tomb. <clears throat> anyway, let's read on. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. Let's just think about this for a minute because we have a future that involves this. Because our bodies are going to be changed and fashioned like Jesus' glorious body. We're going to shine. We're going to have a glory in ourselves. Not to outdo or not like Satan who got pride in himself and wanted to say, I will, I will. No, that will never happen to us because we will be changed to perfection. We'll, we'll cast off this vile body. And we will have a, and just think about these threads. You know, you ever talk about your clothes being threadbare? <laughs> you wear them so long you can start seeing through them. I remember one day taking a pair of pants that went to one of my old suits, taking it off the hanger and, and seeing through it. Wait a minute, I can't wear that to church. I'm going to have to wear black underwear if I do. I mean, you know, you could see through it. It was threadbare. Just think about wearing clothes that's going to last forever, that are going to be illuminated and brilliant. And a body underneath that that's going to be perfect and sinless. And so these angels are created. <clears throat> there is countless like lightning. I don't know about you, but uh, Jason's a welder. And if you try to watch him weld without a mask, that that's a, almost reminds you a little bit of lightning, the brightness of it. It can burn your eyes, mess up your retina. Have you ever seen a close bolt of lightning and the brilliance of it? But this is going to be a, a normal thing for us to enjoy when we see the glory of the Lord. It'll outshine any lightning this earth offers. It'll outshine the sun. So here was this countenance was like lightning. Don't doubt this, folks. Don't say, oh, this is like a fairy tale. No, this is true. And his raiment, white as snow. The only time I've ever worn a white um, suit coat was the day I got married. And... I'm glad I don't have to wear too much white stuff because you know what I do with it? Get it dirty. <laughs> Ketchup, mustard, uh, you know, something like that. Um, now I got something in my way here and it seems like it gets stuff. I just walked by a vehicle and I thought, oh man, where did that junk come from? Dust, you know, you can't keep those clothes clean, can you? Oh, as long as sooner or later you're going to get something on your clothes. Just think about being clothed in white raiment, whiter than snow, cleaner than snow. No need for a washing machine and a dryer. Uh, no need for that. You will be perpetually clean and be because that's the righteousness of the saints. And that righteousness is the righteousness of God imputed to us because of faith. It's not anything we've earned. Amen? But we're going to be so white and bright. And yet, uh, it's just hard to imagine it. And his raiment was white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. There's what happened to them. 
the keepers. They're the ones that are on the watch. They are sitting there, you know, waiting. They're biding their time. I'm like, hey, my watch is almost over. I'm tired. I need to, boy, I'd sure would like to have some bacon. And, oh, wait, these are juice. I would sure like to have a, a philosophical this morning. But I'm sorry, I was thinking, you know, oh, I'm hungry. I can't wait to get, wow, what is that? And they became like dead men. They fell over. I don't know exactly how to take that. Did they die? Became as dead men. They had no power to stop him. No power. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee, and there shall you see him. Lo, I have told you. Now, this would kind of like be a spoiler alert in a sense. This this uh, angel said it all, okay? Uh, he's, he doesn't hold back. He tells them everything. You're going to end up going up to Galilee and so forth. But there's a lot happens on this first day, isn't there? When you read Luke's account, Mark's account, and John's with it. And we will, uh, you know, do that on your own sometime. But you know that he... <clears throat> He saw Mary first, did he not? I'm talking about Jesus. He spoke to her. And I personally believe when he said to her, touch me not. I'll save that for John. You've heard my uh, explanation of that. But I, I believe that he went to heaven to deliver the blood of Jesus Christ to uh, uh, the, the Lord. He says, touch me not for I have not yet ascended to my father. Later he says to Thomas, a whole week later, touch me and be not faithless but believing. Now, it does talk about how that, um, that they, if I'm not mistaken, where was it that it says they were hanging on to him? Oh, right here in verse 9. Let's wait till we get to that. Okay. So he says, uh, Lo, I have told you, 8. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy and did run to bring his disciples' word. Isn't it interesting that you can have multiple emo uh, emotions at the same time? You can have joy and also fear. And like, uh, you know, it, you're still quaking from what you saw. And yet then you're, you're instructed on what to do and you're happy. But, but you're still, you know, trying to get over the intensity of what happened. I mean, we don't know what these ladies went through, but they go back. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them saying, all hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshiped him. And that's where you could insert John's section about uh, that he told her, touch me not. I, it, I don't think it was an idea there where um, they, it, some would say, well, it meant don't cling to me because I'm not going to be here very long. That's, but here they came and they held him by the feet and worshiped him. Then said Jesus unto them, be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee and there shall they see me. And so, Paul records in 1 Corinthians 15 in the resurrection chapter that uh, over 500 brethren at once saw Jesus up there at Galilee. But we know that weeks passed because he saw them in the upper room that night. Uh, he saw them one week later in the upper room. The first night, Thomas absent. The second time, Thomas present. And it makes you wonder, what was Jesus doing on all these days? in between. Well, you know, he had a lot of disciples. Mm -hmm. He could have taken time to go to any one of them, each one of them. He talked to the two men on the road to Emmaus and he expounded all the things in the scriptures and they didn't even know it was him. And so he did that for a purpose. He did that to shore them up and in their own faith. And when they sat to eat, their eyes were open and he vanished. <clears throat> John says it this way. That many things that he did were, were not written. So we can only imagine. We can't insert them in scripture. Uh, we have no clue. But I think it's not wrong to think. That in the 40 days after Jesus' resurrection. That he spent time with many hundreds if not thousands of believers. To shore them up and encourage them. Because he had many, many followers. The Bible just doesn't record it. Uh, you know, I, I think that the Lord is 
always doing the best and the perfect and the right thing. And so I know that he would use his time wisely. Amen. And when we think about us being here uh, on the other side of the earth from Israel, so to speak, um, the Christians, the people that came to Jerusalem from, I'm talking about Jews that became Christians, that came to Jerusalem for a feast, no doubt, and saw Jesus and saw his miracles and believed, might have been in India. They might have been in Africa. They might have been in England. Could he not just, he vanished out of their sight at that meal that first afternoon, did he not? He could appear wherever he wanted to. Later, he just came in, the doors were locked because they were afraid. He just came in the door without opening it. Wouldn't you like to have that kind of ability? You will someday. You'll just walk through a wall, through a door, lock your keys in your car. Well, you're not going to need a car. You're not going to need an airplane. Talk about, uh, you know, beam me up Scotty. Think about uh, the teletransporting that happens on uh, the old um, Star Trek. Uh, it's going to be... We're going to go wherever he wants us to go instantly and automatically. And if you think about uh, Philip after he baptized the Ethiopian eunuch, what happened? That Ethiopian eunuch came up out of the water and Philip was gone. And God picked him up and he brought him over to Azotus. And I don't know how far that was away, but it is suggested that it's over 20 miles. And I don't think he was up there, you know... Flying, Lord, when am I going to get there? I just think he was instantly into the place that God took him. I just think that that kind of travel is possible in the glorified body. And, of course, with God, all things are possible. And so, who knows, in these 40 days, all that Jesus did to shore up Christians and uh, people who may have heard of his death and his burial, but the resurrection... That seals the deal, amen? The resurrection. If Christ be not raised, we are of all men most miserable, Paul wrote. But Christ is risen, the Bible says. Praise God for that. So he says, go into Galilee. He's telling them to go there because that's where he's going to meet. There shall they see me. Now when they were going, behold, some of the watch came into the city and showed unto the chief priests all the things that were done. So undoubtedly, the watchmen that were like they were dead, paralyzed maybe, they went running. They're tattletalers. They went running. And it says uh, they came under the chief priest and they, they said, what are you doing here? You're supposed to be watching that, that tomb. We, we just got knocked down by a, 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 an angel. And some some uh, Sadducee, you know, they don't, they don't believe in and supernatural. They don't believe in angels. They don't believe in anything. Uh, they don't believe in God. They're like the, the common man today. Ah, you're just crazy. And so some of them were arguing. The chief priests were, uh, and so listen to how they deal with it. And when they were assembled with the elders and had tanked council, they gave large money unto the soldiers. Did you know that if you don't keep your watch, <laughs> it's your head. But these men came and reported and they gave them money, saying, Say his disciples came by night and stole them away while we slept. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you for uh, bribing me to say what a terrible sar uh, soldier I am, what a terrible guard I am. I fell asleep. Well, that's, that's okay when you're hunting and you fall asleep and the deer come by and you find out on the camera later that you were sleeping while they walked by. Happened to me, okay? <laughs> But if you are a guard watching somebody and you fall asleep, uh, you know, by the way, Epstein isn't, didn't kill himself, if you, if you didn't know that. Um, but what happened to those guards? They were asleep, somebody said. Something happened. They weren't. You know, are you buying that garbage? But these guys, they got knocked out. They got knocked down as dead men. And now they're getting some money. That sounds like the typical thing today, doesn't it? Uh, you don't do your job. You don't do what's right. Somebody will reward you from the government. Uh, you know, they'll give you a, they'll take care and pay your bail so that you can keep going out and being a rabble rouser and a rioter. And some, some idiot will take care of that. That's, that's kind of what this reminds me of. <clears throat> and if this come to the governor's ears, 
We will persuade him and secure you. Okay, because we know Pilate could have us killed, you know. Pilate could have us killed. We are soldiers. We're Roman soldiers. And, uh, you know, it's interesting that they went to the chief priests. They didn't go to Pilate first. They went to the chief priests. He said, we'll, we'll convince him. We, we'll take care of Pilate. Don't you worry about that. I would have worried about it if I was one of these guys. So they took the money and did as they were taught. And this saying is com commonly reported among the Jews until this day. So this is one of the, this is a biblical conspiracy theory. Think about it. It's commonly reported a falsity. Uh, it, it, it got legs and people, oh, they came and took Jesus' body. And those crazy people believe he's alive. Uh, don't listen to them. That was commonly reported. And it kind of reminds you of the conversation that the rich man who was in hell talking to Abraham said, oh, please, please send the Lazarus to talk to my brothers. If somebody comes from the dead, they will believe him. And he said, no, they have Moses and the law. And it's true that even somebody coming back from the dead, our Lord Jesus Christ, people still won't believe. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee. See how this jumps past all that we see in the other Gospels? Now, they like to call Matthew, Mark, and Luke the synoptics because they're most alike, and John is the most different. But if you actually look at this passage, I think Luke is a lot more like John in the details that he gives than, than like Matthew. That's just my opinion. But we'll wait till we see that when we get to it. Mark is more abbreviated, like Matthew. More abbreviated, it's like, hit the high points. <clears throat> then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee. This was oh, well over a week away. Into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. This shows no mention of Jesus coming in to their presence on that first night. And I like to think, it's interesting when we, we see different churches and how they operate. And so many churches are eliminating and going away from the um, evening service on Sundays. It's sad, isn't it? Who, where did, what time did the Lord meet with his disciples, like Peter? Now, he saw him earlier, but meet with them at even. I think that for nothing else, when we meet on Sunday night, we ought to look at that heritage of the Lord meeting them on that first Lord's night, Lord's Day evening. And that's why we ought to come together to to celebrate the resurrection and to celebrate the word of God. And so it's not an inconvenience. If you, if you want to be here, it's not an inconvenience. Um, that's kind of teasing and Stephen and Tanya, you know, they don't have church on Sunday nights. And that's really a night that they kind of have. <clears throat> Last Sunday night we went to Bill and Linda's and all of us went there and got to see our other uh, relatives. Uh, um, Wayne's sister, Leona, uh, Luann's been very sick, she couldn't come, but Leona and Will, and their two daughters, and their little boy, Will, uh, William, and we had a great time seeing those kids, and I kind of felt funny on a Sunday night not being in church, but they don't have church on Sunday night, that's just, they have multiple things during the week, and they do it differently, oh, I have to stop, but let's finish this, this is such a wonderful, this is the Great Commission coming up. It says, and when they saw him, they worshiped, but some doubted. That kind of harkens back to Thomas, the doubting Thomas. Some doubted. Sure not, he's not the only one. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, now get this, because this is so, so important. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Does that give you a little bit of relief in knowing Oh, these wicked people that want to destroy. They want to cancel the Bible. They want to cancel Christians. They want to cancel our culture. Uh, there was this wicked man talking about every supporter of Donald Trump should be show, thrown into prison. And more heinous things than that. I'm quaking in my boots. No, I'm not. You know why? I have great peace in knowing that all power is given unto Jesus Christ in heaven and in earth. He has all power. They can only do what he allows them to do. 
And he's going to let them go so far. He's going to let them go until the frenzy takes them around Jerusalem. After the sec secret coming, there's the second coming, seven years later. And that frenzy will get them all around Jerusalem, and they will be whipped up by the Antichrist, and they will think that they can do something against Almighty God, but they're wrong, because all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye, therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. I know I could spend a lot more time on the Great Commission this morning, but I can't. Maybe I'll finish it up next week and then go into Mark, because some more needs to be said about it. Father, thank you for this wonderful truth that all power is given unto you. Lord, Actually, you have given all that power unto the Son to do your will in heaven and in earth. And he told us in that model prayer, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your will will be done on earth because of the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. Give us great peace by that fact, Lord. And go with us now, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat>